What's good, friendlies and non-friendlies? Ghosts? Uh, what's going on? What's happening? Where I'm at is cold beyond belief. It's uncomfortable. But other than that, uh, I've been doing pretty good. Pretty alright. You know one thing about it, you know, with the this pandemic going on? I don't know, I don't know how people can take it so lightly, you know? It's like around where I live like there's people that are just not wearing masks when they go out you know they just like just out in the open you know in the parking lots and and you know that they, they walking the worst part about it I don't care if they do it away from me and my place of stay but when they walk by my crib they're walking by without a mask you know and and they're like coughing as they're going by <laughs> You know, and, and it's just like unapologetic and just like acting like it's just a normal thing. Like, yeah, that's the old normal, but like we're like a year in by now. You know, we're a year plus in. You know, it's like, yeah, where's the common sense in these people? And there's like this one family who's like, <clears throat> who's like next door to me. And they like just outside every single day, like just just maskless like and to me it's kind of like how can I say it's kind of disrespectful because you know they obviously don't give a shit about anybody else you know they don't give a shit about the other people who are in the area they just think that they're just above all of it they think that they're above all of it and I take you know um, like MJ I take offense to that you know it's one of those things where I guess it's something about me that always brings out the, the rudest in people, I guess. Because <clears throat> when I was in school, like, when I was in school and just growing up, like, I would always, I was always taught to say bless you when someone sneezes and just be respectful and polite. But I lied to you not throughout my entire school career. <clears throat> I never got one bless you towards me and I always took a mental note of that whenever I sneezed no one ever said bless you to me but whenever somebody else sneezed you know like everybody's coming out the woodworks you know and I'm I just like take it this I'm like just you know I lean back in my chair a bit you know I'm like huh <clears throat> Like, ain't that some bullshit? You know, I'm like taking a personal you know, agenda, vendetta against people not saying bless you because it's been going on for so long with me. I'm like, what do I gotta do to get somebody to say bless you to me? Like, I have genuine sneezes here, man. Don't you hear these genuine sneezes? What, what do I gotta do? But I just never gotta bless you. And I'm always saying, you know, at a certain point, I just, I start holding back on my blessings. I just like, no, you can't have it. Someone sneezed, I'm just like, okay, okay. You, you, you want something out of that? You, you, you were expecting something? But I would eventually cop up because I, I feel guilty. Like, even if it's just like somebody who's like commenting something. Does this make me a jackass if I don't give a like to every single one of these comments? And those are like internal struggles for me. You know, I move past that. <clears throat> The bless you thing, I ain't never moved past though. I, I still keep count of that. But yeah, man, I just like just this lack of respect. And I just, it's kind of like when people don't wear their masks around me or around my place of stay or my personal belongings. It's like people, it's like that same scenario all over again. Like they're just sneezing or I'm sneezing and there's nobody saying bless you or something. And, you know, and, and they sneeze, and then I have to say bless you to them. But yeah, people are not wearing masks. I just like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Gonna make me get an accent over here, man. You know, I just don't understand. Whenever I go outside, I'm always decked out to the brim. I'm wearing masks, masked up, geared up, gloves, snug tight. I got multiple gloves on me. You know, I, I don't take it for granted, but these people around me, they just take everything like it's so nonchalant and they just it just it's just so disrespectful in my humble opinion uh there's nothing really that's been going on that's too exciting
where I, I live at in my part of the world. Oh, I had a nightmare. <laughs> I had a nightmare that Legend of Dragoon got a remake. And while I was thrilled at first, the nightmare part comes in when I looked at what the remake was and it was a Nintendo Switch exclusive. Ugh. Oh man, it was such a high and then it immediately became such a low because it looked so bum, bummed out. It, it looked at like Deadly Premonition 2 mixed with Smash Brothers, the graphics I'm talking about. It was so disappointing and I am so grateful that and I, I guess I'm grateful that it didn't happen because if that was the if that happened and that was how it came out, oh my god. I don't know how I how, how I would respond to that. I don't know why I'm speaking in an accent. <clears throat> Randomly going to accents. <laughs> I don't know how I would have responded to that. Or how I would have felt. I guess I would have been happy. You know? I guess. But at the same time, the, the potential, you know, what could be, would have been just tossed down the drain, you know? You know, then there's, there's Yoshida saying, oh, well, we have to make this game great. It can't be a cheap cash-in, because people, fans will see it as a quick cash-in. You know, and when I see Nintendo Switch games, I immediately think of a quick cash in. <laughs> like they just make this, you know, just, just, just a little game just to throw in. You know, we'll take, collect a few bucks. But anyways, we're getting back into this L O D J P comparison playthrough. Word to the bird for your mama and your baby mama, full of the drama, and we ain't about the. Lie on no llamas, we about to get into some boss fights that you guys are going to know and love. The dearly beloved Linus and the Get Rich uh, uh, Club. And we're going to see how those two compare in the JP versus the US versions. And hopefully, I'm, yeah, I'm not boring people and I have some gameplay going in the background. Cause that's what a smart person would do. So let's talk about Get Rich. <laughs> the differences between both of them in both versions, uh, aside from the the generic, oh he's harder, you know he hits harder. <laughs> um, he has a, a super move, right? His his contact team combo. I call those super moves when their super moves are the moves that you have no access to that are strictly to a certain enemy or they're just you know they're specific to a set few of enemies and they aren't accessible to the player those are what I would call special moves or supers you know and unique attacks so in JP he does this move and I want you to I want you to think about it. How often would he do this move against you? You play the game and how much will he do this move and how many times in a row would he pull this move off? In my one run against him, he pulled it off three times in a row. So get rich in JP. He's another one who can instantly kill you multiple times. They have Mappy who has his insta-kill and then they have that super tag team combo unique attack that is also an insta-kill depending on who it hits. And then you add in the fact that they can combo it into duo turns back to back. It's an insta-kill on anybody who isn't guarding against it. And then you add in the fact that it doesn't stop at just a double, they could get more than a double. In fact, they could get a quadruple. You're seeing, you're hearing me say this, a quadruple. You're like, what the hell? Quadruple, is this, is this dude smoking? Is he tripping? Yes, I am. And so are you. That's why you are here. <laughs> you tripped and you fell and you can't get up. And that's just the way that JP is. All these enemies seem to have this this designated, I don't know if it's scripted or not, but they have this designated part in the match where 
they're just going to kill somebody. At some point, they're just going to get a combination of turns that is going to wreak havoc. And I don't know if it's scripted, but I know that it doesn't happen in nor in version two. Let's call it version two. This is USA. In version two, it doesn't happen. But in JP, it happens just about in every boss fight. It's going to be one instance, if not multiple instances, where they just have this moment where they say, okay, we're going to kill. We're going into kill mode, terminate, target, and then they just launch an all-out assault. And they get just, you know, it, it gets almost absurd. And that's not the only difference. The other difference is that Mappy, who is the easier target, he has this move where he insta-kills, but he only does it after you get a certain amount of damage done on either one or two of the individuals who are in the fight. So no matter who you target, when you get them to a low enough health pool, Mappy will teleport for a couple of turns, and then after a set amount of turns, he will come back into the fight and he will insta-kill one of your members. Now, he would usually do this once per fight, but if you foil around, he could do it twice in the fight. You have to try really, really, really hard for him to do it more than once. But in JP, it's more or less mandatory that he's going to do it twice. Meaning he's going to insta-kill twice in the match. It's scripted. It's scripted that he's going to kill somebody twice. So that's the difference, that's the change, and it's more likely to happen because they have a larger health pool, so it's going to take longer. But also, I just think that they just programmed it that way for him to do it twice. And that's pretty much the Get Rich fight. And uh, I, I talk about how I approach the fight. Because he, Mappy disappears, in the fight he's usually the one that I would try to target but because he disappears twice in the fight it's kind of hard to target your damage I want to get as much damage done as possible to make sure that he can't you know do that so in order to do that my tactic was I was going to target the person who didn't disappear which is which is green guy so I focus Everything towards him is going to take longer, but he's also more susceptible. I can continue in a steady onslaught. I get rid of their super quicker, and I just have to deal with one member at a time for the most part after, you know, trying to survive the very beginning of the fight. But once you get them to start disappearing, you can kind of get like a, a grip on the fight. So that's going to be how I approach the fight. I tried Mappy in the past when my first time playing the JP and it did not go well so I switched it up and in this playthrough that's what I went with so with that I'm going to head out and not talk your ears completely off and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video and I'll be back with some Linus tips after these fights. Be cool.
Sweet Mary Linus, the girl, or scratch that, the lady with her crotch out, and th that's it, that's it, the lady with her crotch out. So she's notoriously one of the harder fights in the game that people, whenever they mention Legend of Dragoon, she's basically the boogeyman of the game, <clears throat> you know, she's synonymous with the game. No matter what you do, you're going to find her attached to the title as far as being difficult. It's not really that hard. <laughs> well, it's hard if you don't know how to how to do it. I guess it, there's a lot of RNG involved, but I've never really had that much trouble with it. With that said, <clears throat> I have been downplaying this fight so much in my this playthrough that I think C came out for some sweet good old revenge. I've been talking so much shit about her. She came out to prove me wrong. In this playthrough, I am undefeated. I have not lost once. And that's probably because I have not been talking while I've been playing. So I've been concentrating more. But I definitely went in this one 
on some uh you know i was i was stunting i was stunting on her mama and her drama i was stunting real hard and so i didn't put my best foot for it so <laughs> uh she, she came out to, to test my g levels also this is a no item shop challenge so i'm dealing with a shortage of items after back to back boss fights i use all of my resources against them because i said that they were the hardest fights in the game up to that point so I'm down to three hills and I think no revives I think I have no revives and just three regular hills and nothing else so <clears throat> that's what I'm dealing with in JP on the upper right of North American I'm way more stacked same deal no item shop challenge but I'm just way more stacked. I got like seven heals. I got like one or two heal alls and like a couple of revives. You know, so I'm stacked up there because I haven't needed them. But at the bottom left on uh, JP, I'm, I'm a little barren. I'm looking like a looking like the first month of COVID right now on the, on the bottom left. All right, everybody's taking the toilet paper. I'm screwed. But uh, the differences in the fight. I initial thoughts on this fight was that she was faster because when I first played this and I have it in my old footage of the first time I played it first time I played about a year ago I swear she went six consecutive turns in a row and then I got one turn and then she took like two more turns so she took an eight to one turn ratio against me in JP about a year ago it may have been like five to one, and then she took two more, or something like that. Well, yeah, it was it was ridiculous. But even though that makes sound like might sound like it makes her unstoppable and just completely unfair, she is balanced. She's definitely balanced because her magic attacks do way less. So the way that I approached the fight shifted in a bit because I knew that her magic attacks we're going to be the part that I'm going to be safer. I'm actually going to be safer when she starts pulling out her magic attacks. Because when she throws out her physicals, her melee, that shit hurts. And it doesn't do that much more in JP. I guess they decided that she didn't need that much of a nerf or a, of a buff because her damage isn't really that different even with physicals it's not like it's doubled or anything it's it's like 20 15 percent more or something like maybe 30 percent more or something i'm not a mathematician but it's like the difference between 200 and 285 that that's the difference in her damage with physicals her melee doesn't exactly make up for the nerfs that she has in JP because her magic is definitely down by at least 300 at, at the most. I don't really know. She's still hard. She's still hard, but she's harder up front in the first part of the fight. When she's doing nothing but melees at the melee. And when you get her near to half the halfway mark, she starts breaking out the spells. So that was the, my focus to get her to that point as fast as possible because it hurts. It hurts when she's just knocking all three of your members with nearly 300 damage each turn. Um, there's nothing else I need to say. That's pretty much the main difference in the fight. You know, it takes longer to kill her so she has more opportunities to kill you. But at the same time, you know, her, her damage is nerfed as a, as a whole. But it's also buffed up front. So yeah, give and take, give and take. But I think this one is kind of just like a, it's a draw. You know, it's just kind of like a flat line. I would say they're both equally as hard, but I know how to deal with one more than I know how to deal with the other. So I don't know, I can't really speak on it. Uh, you, you decide and I'll let the fight speak for itself. I say that damn near every time. Anyways, I'm out.
So as you can see, I end up getting C C pretty much uh, C she put a beating on me, and it's because I took her too lightly. So the next one, I'm going in with all of my best, my putting my best foot forward. You know, by using using the highest hitting moves. You know, playing it like I would play it in a serious fight. I tr I tried to stun on her because I didn't think she was going to be that tough. She ended up putting a foot at my, you know, darts ass. But we got to play this smarter since I know that she's she's very hard up front. She's I've been saying that this whole time, and I haven't been thinking of the phrase, and haven't I? <laughs> so since she's she's so buff up front. I'm going to do what I call a rotational offense, which isn't anything new, it's just how I approach this because I don't want any of the other members taking damage. And what a rotational offense is, is meaning another word for it is next man or next woman up, is you have one person designated to the offense and everybody else holds down the fort <clears throat> and you, you use that one person on the front lines until they get down and that way once they get down you can have your ones who were holding down the fort they could be able to take up the the next line of offense and so you could take one of them and then they go for it and then they go on the offense and you recover the other two and so you keep rotating between your members until you get your satisfied results for as long as you can hold on and then you eventually go in on an all out, you know, an all out assault basically. So since I only have like a couple, like three hills that's not much to manage with, it's definitely not much to deal with this trick. <laughs> uh, you're going to see me doing that doing that a lot and just trying to hold on but I'm gonna I'm, I'm waiting for one moment I'm waiting for her to get through with her first phase and then once he switches that's when I'm going to go all in with everybody else and just you know throw everything against the wall and, and that's how I'm going to end up um, Dealing with this being a no item shop challenge. So I'm gonna have to pull this out a a healthy amount of times because I'm not gonna survive the fights otherwise, you know, so I'm gonna have to just pull out survival tactics t survival tactics in order to uh, make it through this and So with that I'm gonna leave this round two and I guess you could watch this again if you want, if, you know, if you want, and I'll leave it at that, and I'm gonna head out, may peace be with, always keep your heads up, deuces, those both sides of your stick, cool, like this content, be sure to sow some love, but always be sure to sow that love to the people who matter to you, sign to y'all, and be cool, peace, and much love.